So this image should be pretty familiar to the majority of you. It's the image of the fitness industry, the aura it gives off. But how intimidating is that for sedentary people, older people, women, people with disabilities? Some measures have been taken to render certain aspects of fitness more accessible. We've created women's only gyms, for example. But what if you're gender non-binary? What if you're transgender? When you hear debates about bathrooms in the media all the time, about your very basic need as to relieve yourself somewhere you feel comfortable to do so, how does that affect you as a person? Think of a time where you may have felt intimidated by fitness. This could be joining a group fitness class or maybe being picked last in gym class. We've all been there. Whatever it may be, this is the reason why we have such a large percentage of the population that is sedentary. They feel so far removed from this idea of fitness that they're discouraged before even starting. Transgender issues are like the final frontier of fitness. If we boldly go where none have gone before, Creating space for that group of people is essentially going to open the door for everyone else because it means deconstructing our pre-existing ideas about sex and gender and how it relates to fitness and performance. Now I want to try a little experiment with y'all and I'm very serious. Take out your cell phone, but with your non-dominant hand, this is important, and take a picture with this. Now it can be a selfie, can be a picture of me. I did dress up for this, so make it count. Hashtag PKN29, hashtag blessed. Millennials. While you do this, I want you to uh, maybe reflect on how difficult this may feel, foreign, a little bit odd. Maybe your picture is going to turn out like this, a blurry mess, but don't take a blurry picture of me, please. <laughs> this is similar to what a non-binary or transgender experience is like. I see some of y'all looking at me like, gender non-binary, what is that? Well, let me give a quick explanation about sex and gender theories. First off, sex and gender is not the same thing. Sex being determined by genetics and biology and gender being the social and cultural representation of sex. Now, gender exists on a spectrum with male and female being polar to each other and with various degrees in between them. A transgender person generally feels like their sex is not representative of their gender and that includes gender non-binary folks who may fall anywhere in between that male and female spectrum. Now, creating inclusivity in fitness is not just a matter of goodwill, but also of research. Doing research on training transgender and non-binary folks is important because a certain percentage of that population is going through hormone therapy, which directly influences their physiology. This means that we have whole new parameters of training to take into consideration. And that takes us to the general population through a better understanding of sex, gender, and how it relates to fitness and sports. In the Olympics, for example, they use testosterone as a determinant of sex. They do this by looking at the testosterone of a female-bodied person and only validating that female body if the testosterone levels are under a certain limit. There are some biological females who naturally have higher levels of testosterone, and yet they would be limited to compete to the best of their abilities based on only one aspect of physiology used as a determinant of sex. But we know that sex is more complex than a single hormone. And I wanted to demonstrate that with a real world example of this. This is Janae Krog Zaleski. She's a trans woman who was a world champion powerlifter before her transition from man to woman. Now, many would assume that to reach such a high level of performance in powerlifting, one must need testosterone levels higher than average. For Janae, though, this was simply not the case. In fact, her testosterone levels were considered low and her estrogen high by male standard and this before she started her transition. She's just one of many examples showing us that we need to challenge our current worldview. So what are we doing now, you may ask. Well, I'm glad you're asking. Because I've aligned myself with Blitz Conditioning and the Edmonton Men's Health Collective, and we have created a group training class for LGBTQ folks with a focus on trans and non-binary people. This is the only class of its kind. Back in July, we launched a three-week beta where we asked the participants to give us feedback about what went well, what didn't go so well, etc. We did some modifications. And in September, we launched our six-month pilot. So we give classes three times a week, one hour each. I'm the trainer. And in the spirit of being inclusive, 
we also wanted to take into consideration the socioeconomical barriers to fitness. And so we have actually crowdfunded this project so that it is accessible to everyone and participants can come for free. Another thing that we've done, thank you, <laughs> is that we have um, created some sheets to be filled out by participants. They fill it out upon their first session and it asks various questions about markers of health like social health, physical health, mental health. At the end of the six month, they will fill it up again and then it will give us data and we'll be able to see, okay, how was all those markers of health impacted by our program and it legitimizes the program. What we hope that does is twofold. A, we hope it gives us access to funding and grants so that we can continue offering the project for free and B, hopefully that hard data is gonna show other fitness facilities that creating inclusivity is something that really works and hopefully they will implement it in their own business. So to conclude, when we create inclusivity for the most vulnerable of our population, we open the door for everyone else. Challenging gender binaries is necessary for all of us to move forward, not just in fitness. Oh yeah, that's my face, that's me. <laughs> Doing research in hormone therapy is not just gonna help transgender and non-binary folks. It can help anyone going through hormone therapy for whatever reason. And giving a more inclusive image to fitness will show everyone they have a space within it because fitness is individual and should be approached as such. So let's help each other reach our full potential without barriers or judgment. Thank you.